The human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV, hasn't been around for very long. But in its short existence, 75 million have been infected by the virus and 32 million have died from AIDS. HIV acts by infecting and killing a specific group of white blood cells in a person's body. At first, the individual experiences flu-like symptoms such as fever, sore throat and fatigue. Then after an average of 8 years, they'll get an infection their immune system isn't strong enough to fight. Examples are a type of fungal pneumonia or a virus that leads to cancer. At this stage, death is almost certain. The earliest sufferers of HIV weren't so lucky, however, we've now reached a stage where having HIV is no longer lethal and people can now survive up to 50 years after being infected. There's a good chance that HIV will be completely eradicated by the end of this generation. This video will explore the history of HIV from how it first infected humans to where we are today. Molecular studies show that several strains of the HIV virus evolved from another virus known as SIV. This virus is endemic in ape populations in West and Central Africa. Most HIV researchers believe that the virus was first transmitted from chimps to humans sometime in the 1920s in Kinshasa, now part of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Bushmeat practice, which is the hunting of wild animals for food, was most likely responsible for this transmission. The 1920s was a prime period in history for the HIV virus to rapidly spread around Western Central Africa. European colonialism, starting from around the late 19th century, brought about a population growth and the emergence of large colonial cities in the region, which was a breeding ground for sexually transmitted infections. The colonialists also brought vaccinations for smallpox, and later on injections for antibiotics, which meant that many people would have received HIV from infected needles. The earliest 100% confirmed case of HIV was found from a retrospective blood sample of a man living in Kinshasa in 1959. HIV is thought first to have reached the Americas in 1967, from a Haitian who returned to the home country after contracting the virus while working in Congo. It then went from Haiti to New York in the early 70s. Around this time, several homeless people and heroin addicts started to die from a pneumonia-like illness, which was dubbed junkie flu. This largely went unnoticed at the time. From New York, HIV quickly spread across the United States. The epidemic was first recognised when the US Centers for Disease Control reported an unusual cluster of fungal pneumonia in homosexual men in Los Angeles. Soon after this, clusters of opportunistic infectious diseases began to spring up in gay men living in cities all over the country. These men were previously healthy individuals who seemed to have been suddenly inflicted with these mysterious illnesses before dying. This phenomenon was quickly recognised as a sexually transmitted infection and the term gay-related immune deficiency was coined. But half of these people weren't actually gay. Infections were also noted in haemophiliacs, users of intravenous drugs like heroin, as well as immigrants from Haiti. This led to some researchers to call it the 4-H disease. But in August 1982, the CDC gave it its official name, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. In 1983, a team of doctors at the Pasteur Institute in France reported that they had isolated a new retrovirus, which they believed was the cause of AIDS. They named the virus Lymphadenopathy Associated Virus, and a sample was sent to the US Center for Disease Control for confirmation. Independent isolations of the virus also happened in America, Eventually, they were found to be the same, and in 1985, the name HIV was given. The French doctors won the Nobel Prize in 2008 for the discovery, and discovering the virus allowed widespread testing to be done for it, using a method known as ELISA. But by now, every region in the world had HIV. The official figures for 1986 was that 85 countries and 40,000 people had reported cases to the World Health Organization. The true number 
was most likely much higher than this. The first FDA approved treatment for HIV was in 1987 for a drug called zidovudine. It worked by blocking the incorporation of HIV into a person's DNA, which is the main method that HIV uses to make more copies of itself. Studies of the drug had proven promising and after only two years of trials on AIDS patients, it was approved. More drugs were eventually found, which fought HIV using other mechanisms of actions, and by 1995, they were being used as a combination therapy in order to treat patients as effectively as possible. The therapy is known as highly active antiretroviral therapy and proved successful as age-related death rates immediately dropped by over 60% in countries that could afford it. Despite this, there was still no cure for HIV and in Africa, AIDS became the number one killer with 33 million people living with HIV and 14 million deaths since 1981. But there's still been slow and consistent progress with measures like reducing the drug price and education and safe sexual practices. So the battle with HIV is by no means over. About a quarter of people with HIV are still unaware that they have the virus, which means that it's still very difficult to control the spread of HIV. The next potential innovation in the battle against HIV would be to find a cure or a vaccination. Things are looking promising. In 2007, a patient from Berlin was officially cured from HIV after receiving a bone marrow transplant from a person who had genetic resistance to HIV. Furthermore, trials of potential HIV vaccines are currently ongoing, with some even reaching phase 2 of clinical trials. Overall, we've seen a gradual decline in the stigma of HIV virus and its carriers. Measures such as pre-exposure prophylaxis has been shown to be highly effective, reducing the risk of contracting HIV by up to 99%. This, alongside the recent Undetectable Lequals Untransmittable campaign, has encouraged more people to receive treatment and the general population to fear HIV less. Individuals nowadays who have been adequately treated for HIV are sterile to the point that they are available to donate their organs to others with HIV with little risk of the surgical team being infected. This was approved by the HOPE Pact, which stands for HIV Organ Policy Equity, in 2013. This law, alongside many other developments, brings us one step closer to the day that HIV becomes a thing of the past.